Hello and welcome to PHP unit testing of Tablet 3 extensions. I'll introduce you to the bare, very basic bare minimum of how to set up unit testing for Tablet 3 extensions. If you are already familiar with unit testing in PHP unit, you don't need this video. Also notice there is nothing special about Tablet 3 extensions when it's about unit testing, um, at least not when you are starting. So if you are looking for a specific type of free extension testing, you might switch over to a more specific video. So let's start. First of all, we need to look at the source code we want to test. So in this example, it's in classes domain model page view. So we want to test this simple model. And I recommend that you always start with basic examples to get used to the ecosystem and basic setup. And once you are familiar with this one, you can head over to more complex examples like controller. So in this case, we have a simple constructor, as you can see on the right side in the overview of the methods of the class and some setters, uh, getters, sorry. So there's no way to modify it once it's created. Now let's start creating tests for this one. The first test could be, can we create an instance and the second one can be, can we retrieve the page UID once you have created this one? So in order to do so, let's create a folder tests and below this one, a folder unit to separate different kind of tests, uh, which will make configuration later on easier and followed by the same path as with in our classes folder. So everyone knows where to look up tests and its corresponding classes. Add tests to the end of the class name and file name, and let's open this file. I recommend to have them in split mode so you can see your test and your code you are testing in parallel. I need to add the class name, or sorry, the extension name to my examples. And that's a very basic setup of this file. So we have PSR4 namespace, the same as for your classes, just below the tests folder. We add a use statement for our class we want to test. We add a use statement for the test case provided by the PHP unit framework, which we extend. And now we can write our first test within this class. A test is indicated by the add test annotation and has to be a public method. I stick to the lower camera case version of method names as well as to the annotation at test. There are also different ways to do this. Um, and now let's create the test. And within this method, we just write stupid PHP code. So actually, we create an instance. And we always need an assertion so we can check whether the world is in the state as we expect. In this case, we want to expect that subject is an instance of page view and nothing else. So the first uh, argument provided to the, um, sorry, assert methods is always the value that should match, in this case, the class page view as string. And the second one is always the value to compare with, in this case, our subject variable. There are some uh, exclusions like um, assert true, where true is already part of the uh, method name, so you don't need to add true subject, for example. So once you have your test, you need to execute the test. And in order to do so, and in order to have this test case, we need to install PHP unit. So we add PHP unit to our development dependencies via Composer, because we don't want to have them on production. There's no need to have PHP unit on production. It's only intended for development purposes. Once it is installed, we can check and execute it. Now, in my case, 
it's installed under vendor bin. This depends on your composer JSON configuration, but this one is the default. Once we have it installed, we can pass the argument uh, of the folder and files to execute as tests. And obviously, I have an issue here. Yep, let's not call it tests, but test. And now we get an output. Now this output isn't very friendly for humans. So let's add color. And also let's change the output format to test docs. Now this provides um, a better readable output. Now you can see that the page view is tested and that we have a test and instance can be created, which is failing for this reason. Now this class is not being found. That's because, let me have a look. Ah, well, um, looks like this one, page view, yeah, sure. This one is page view, not page views. So now we get another. Uh, error, which is intended, because we pass too few arguments to our constructor. So that's a normal PHP error. You can see together with the stack trace aggregated to our test. So let's change that one. As you can see on the left side, we need at least those six arguments. So let's add them. The page ID can be one. Site language will be added later on. We add a new date type immutable instance. We add a page type in URL. And as user agent, we will just add an empty string. And the UID is optional. By default, it's zero. So of course, this isn't valid PHP code. So we need to provide the site language. Now, something like that. Site language is a class of type 3. So in unit tests, you want to encapsulate the outer world, put it under your control, and focus only on the subject under test, which in our case is our model. So we won't create a site language because in case there is some error, it's not related to our code we want to test. So instead, we will use a mock. Uh, let me write the code first. This is prophesize site language. Of course, we need to import site language namespace, which I did. Save it. And because we are using prophesize, we need to call reveal afterwards. So what we are doing here is that we create a profit for this class type. And we can now uh, configure how it should behave. For example, you could say whenever the method get language UID is called, it will return one, for example. And we also can say, okay, we expect uh, the method set language UID to be called with argument one, um, at least should be called and stuff like that. So that way we can just have our real code we want to test as real code and everything else can be mocked and adjusted to our needs. So let's execute the test once more. And now we get another warning because I'm using PHP version 9 where prophesize is already deprecated and will be removed in version 10 and it's moved to a third party dependency. So let's add this dependency in addition. And this message also explains that we should use the trade provided by this dependency. So a new dependency is installed. Sorry. And under vendor, PHP spec, P, uh, prophecy, PHP unit, you can see there's a single thread, which is a prophecy trade which we will add to our test. And of course, we need to import the namespace once more, which I just did. 
you can save the file, execute the test again, and the test is green. So that's the very first unit test. Now, let's the second one. We can copy this one because we need an instance of our class. Let's adjust the assertion. Uh, assert same. So we expect that subject get page UID should return the number, the integer one. That's what same does. If you would write this one, we would expect a string. And if page UID returns an integer, it would, uh, would fail. And of course, you need to adjust the method name because in PHP, there can't be the same method twice. Um, page UID can be retrieved. And executing tests again shows that both tests pass. So that's how to write tests. Another thing is about what to test. And I would recommend to start with very basic stuff like those simple models. And I also recommend to test everything. You could argue, why should I test this get page UID? It's obvious and it's just working, of course. But what might happen if you uh, have something like a setter where maybe a string is added, you won't retrieve an integer anymore. Of course you would because of this uh, typecast. Um, but you could also change the constructor to add something like page object and retrieve information from this one. And maybe tomorrow you decide to provide a string instead of an integer, all those kind of things. And then your test will tell you, wait a moment, you broke the public API. This is a breaking change, or you might revert back to the original one. So you should always test everything in my opinion. In order to get an overview of what is missing in your tests, once you are getting used to writing tests and want to look what is missing, you can add a code coverage report. In order to get the information how to do so, let's grab for coverage and add the coverage HTML report. This needs a directory. Let's add reports. And we also need to provide a filter about which code um, to test whether it's covered or not. So this can be read, execute every test inside the tests folder, generate a report in HTML format to the reports directory, and add coverage report for all PHP code below the classes folder. In order to generate those information, you need a third party dependency like xdebug or pcov for PHP coverage. I've installed that one and get the report. Now we can open the index.html file. There's also a dashboard file, and we can see that our lines, functions, and classes are not covered yet because we just started, but our page view model is already covered, at least those two methods. So that's it. I hope you find it interesting and have fun.